You're but, absolutely uh, right. Spawning up in the top left for Psystorm Gaming. We'll see what he can do here. It is Max Pax. His opponent in the bottom right. I was just looking at the Twitch chat prediction. This is the most lopsided one so far, with literally 0% of people. A, a 1 to 228 odds oh. for the Terran right here. It's Nico wrecked. You get a 1 to 1 if Max Pax wins. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a whole lot of points to split from the Nikarak supporters. No. They really have to ration them quite, quite hard. Oh, that's actually an insane prediction. All right, well, I don't think the odds are quite zero percent, but it is going to be a very difficult one for our Terran for sure. Look, I don't entirely disagree though. Mexpex is so good in this matchup, right? Like yeah. the only matchup he is critical off in at least towards himself seems to be protos versus zerk right now but his pvz is also really strong so it's not like max Pax really has any particular weaknesses in my mind one of the best protos players in the entire world um, i've been genuinely very impressed by max Pax over the last half year or so the guy is just so incredibly good i think anyone who knows like who really knows who has their their ear to the ground on the scene and looks at things critically knows that Max Pax is one of, if not the best Protoss players in the world in terms of not necessarily results, because we haven't seen him offline, but in terms of the solidness of his play and the yeah, sharpness of his... Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, now, the reason that he does struggle a little bit, I think, with PBZ is something I alluded to earlier on the bra uh, in the bracket, in that he can be a little bit little bit predictable. So what makes Hero so good in PvZ is what makes Max Pax struggle a little bit more in PvZ, and that is his relative lack of build order diversity. Yeah. It's a very European versus Korean style, right? Because I yes. can imagine if you were to ask Max Pax that question, he will probably think that some of the builds that Heroes plays is, is just terrible <laughs> and he doesn't like them whatsoever. But it's exactly what allows Hero a lot of wins against top tier players all the time, so... Yeah, it is fun. The top level Protoss players all play the game a little bit differently, just from a baseline point of view. It's uh, it's cool to see how they approach the game. And well, this time around, it's going to be a Twilight Council. Max Pax historically has been a very big fan over the last maybe two years or so of going for the good old four gate all in. Yes, it's a build that he doesn't play that much anymore against the top tier Terrans because He's indirectly trained them to be really good at defending that <laughs> style, which is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So maybe he'll bring it out right here against Nico, right? Because he does still play it from time to time, but it could be anywhere from like two to four gateways or so, and then into a third nexus. Well, there's gateway number three. Yeah, his most standard setup so far for this has been three gate blink in the last little bit, but he will still go for the four gate blink. And as, as I say, that literally throws down that fourth gateway. Yep. We talk about skill checks. It's not so much that this build is a skill check. It's the way that Max Pax executes that makes it a skill check. By the way, Adept getting into the main base is no fun at all for the Terran. Uh, that nope. is already very annoying to deal with. And the Adept is going to shade to the natural. So far, no SCVs have gone down just yet. Meanwhile, Widowmine drop in the middle of the map is spotted by Max Pax. And we talk about like the skill He's also just so good at this kind of stuff, like knowing timings and being like, yes, I need to be in position at this moment because you you opened up double gas. So your your drop is 20, 30 seconds faster. Like a, he, he mm -hmm. checks all the boxes. Yeah, it can be very difficult. We see Protoss players all the time, for example, take a lot of damage from a Widowmine drop while they're busy microing a bunch of Stalkers. This is actually Nico right now going across the map. This can backfire very easily, though, because he's going up against a Protoss player who's just about to be aggressive. And yes. these units are going to be faced with Blink Stalkers. Like, this is this is something that Micro uh, really well, Protoss, should be able to just clean up. Yeah, like, really hard, too. Like Yes. Like, there's he's double Blink. He's ASAP. Nico wrecked, that is. Yeah, he, okay, he's, he's going back home right now. Uh, he did keep the Widow Mine drop alive in the natural for now, but it's already taken so much damage. Like, I think that's, what is that, 30... It's two two hits. Two hits will kill it. And there's two stalkers in the natural, so that's not getting unloaded. 
Neek racked. Fortunately, he didn't lose the siege tanks, which are the most important thing in this defense. But he doesn't exactly have the greatest Sim City. Now, Liberator in the main base. Oh, look at that. Max Max actually blinking in to each shot so he doesn't have to uh, <laughs> lose mining time. Neek racked manually targeting probes there. Yeah. That is a very valuable Liberator. That was five probes and a Stalker. Absolutely. Yeah. So how many Siege tanks do we have? We've got two right now. One of them is sieged up in the back. First one ends up going down. Okay, Max Specs trying to see if he can get damage done over here inside of the main base of his opponent, and so far, so good. If you uh, give him an opportunity, though, ooh, there is an opportunity here for the Terran as well to drop the Widow Mines. Hello, hello, oh. Max Specs. Okay, he does react. It's going to be only two workers here in the end. He's obviously microing in the meantime with those Stalkers, right? So that's what I was trying to point out earlier. That's where a lot of Protoss players, when playing oh. four gate Blink, do fall short. No, you can't get uh, your easy invisible burrow anymore here either. That one's going to go down. Oh, we are going to see a dive on the the bunker of the natural. Not enough repair to keep it alive. And there's that secondary blink micro. Thanks to the uh, war prism. Max Pax. He has not won this game yet. And there is going to be three tanks once again in a moment. But he is really creating a lot of difficulties for Nikorak right here. Nikorak's doing a great job so far. Oh, there's the mm -hmm. blink to d baits out the shot. And actually, okay, now I think that's that actually might just be it. Yeah, I think you may be onto something here because there's so much damage coming out of those Stalkers. Without any of that Siege Tank support, these units just deal so much damage. And 9 SCVs going down is already enough. Aggressive link forward. Apparently, we're hoping that maybe the Siege Tanks are going to deal some splash damage as well to the front lease now. I guess luckily for Nikorak, <laughs> the Siege Tank was on Siege. But that also meant that it wasn't dealing a lot of damage to the Stalkers. And the Stalkers, if they have any sand to matter, well, they will blink on top of that Siege Tank once again. Not the easiest game of Max Pax's life, but certainly not the hardest. It, he made it look easy, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, once again, the execution of being able to pull those probes, being able to defend while you're attacking. He he is so damn good, man. He is like actually yep. just borderline inhuman. Uh, it, it's ridiculous to watch how good and how well he executes things. And he yeah, he sniped the he he just sni like if you leave an opening at all against the four gate blink, he will take it every time, every single time. And even when that observer got sniped, he was so quick to replace it so he could see where he wanted to attack. Absolutely. Yep, so this is not a build that Maxpex seems to play that much anymore when it needs to be done against top-tier Terrans out there, but it's still something he mixes in against the likes of Clem 2. Wondering if he's going to do it again here two games in a row. Our next map is going to be Site Delta, so also a pretty standard one. Now, everybody's already ready. We are ready, and we are indeed going to be loading into it right away. Yeah, not really... Um, the thing is, right, so it's not the build order that's difficult, right? The four gate blink opener is not necessarily difficult to execute as far as the structures go. The execution part is the micro when it comes to the stalkers and the decision making to commit to a fight or to not commit to a fight, deal with a widow mine drop and the liberator at home. There's so many moving parts. And even though stalkers feel like kind of beefy units, when you have, for example, a bunch of siege tanks firing at them, you have to be incredibly quick at decision making because otherwise they just, well, they fall so easily. They really do. They really do. They are, they're, they can look so strong in the right hands, but in the wrong hands, they look so flimsy and so mm -hmm. useless. And Max Pax, he just knows how to make them look so strong. And here he is spawning down in the bottom right. For Size Storm Gaming, it's Max Pax. Up one to zero. And his opponent in the blue in the opposite corner of the map. It's Nico Wrecked. Now let's see what this uh what this match entails. Site Delta is a I mean I'd say it's a slightly worse map for Four Gate Blink, but Oceanborn is not an amazing map for Four Gate Blink either, and he still made it work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I it, think he could just he could just play it. He doesn't have to. Yeah. It's just that I guess if you go for like a, a two or a three gate third base expand, it becomes a little bit more difficult overall because your opponent has more opportunities, right? Because Terran has access to such a wide variety of attacks. And there's a lot of um, 
additional complexity, I suppose. So that's uh, one of the nice things about going for the four gate blink. It, it simplifies the game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the calculus is such that you're trying to out execute your opponent. And if you do, and they make a mistake on defense, you just win. And if they don't, but you execute still very well, you can still take a third Nexus. You can still play out from behind it. Like, and you can even still be ahead. You can just get ahead with little chip damage on many maps. Like it is, it, it really is a, a super high skill cap play, the four gate blink stalker. Yeah. No, the, the sky is the limit. And if you do it really well, you can actually win the game, but it's just much easier said than done. I'm actually very <laughs> excited to see how Maxpex does in this tournament overall. Um, we're not entirely sure exactly how... Uh, I don't know if Serral's going to be playing at all. I guess not, right? In no, he's not. Not in the regionals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's what I was thinking. Still, I guess, is, is this going to be yeah, when there, Maxpex a... takes a crown? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, Clem is looking incredibly strong. Obviously, Raynor also one of the favorites in any tournament that he enters. So those, I, I think, are going to be Maxpex's main opposition. But he has certainly beaten both of them. Uh, in the past, I, I don't think Maxpex is necessarily favored against either Raynor or Clem. Ooh, Ooh actually, uh, did get loses the, the uh, Reaper, yeah. Yeah, the Reaper there, but uh, there's a, a very good chance that we will see Maxpex go really far in this event and potentially all the way until the very end. But that's still a long while away. That's like a, a yes. month away from now. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's quite a ways. Yeah, I think the yeah i think the last day is like at least two and a half weeks or three weeks from now like it's oh wait no no the for playoff wait what? i'm not no, sure I, I think it's like literally four weeks i think we're doing four weeks of broadcast oh, wow with, uh, only the mondays i believe is when there's no stream over here because of the fact that the eso open cup is running yes. so there will be uh many other <laughs> many other channels where you can watch another like 10 hours of starcraft yep absolutely uh, by the way, it is a three racks play from Nikorak, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm pretty sure he was hoping that Max Pax was going for a Stargate. Unfortunately yep. for him, it's another Twilight Council, and the Adepts able to force some lost mining time there. Obviously, Nikorak couldn't transfer while those Adepts were down there. Even snipe an SCV. Max Pax is already kind of cooking in this game, and this time it's just going to be three gate blink with an expand. But that is going to give him enough units to cause problems, at least, for this attack. Now, Nikorak did prioritize plus one weapons quite hard in this game. So he's going to have he's going to have some strong units, but the timing will be later. Just yep. a little bit. By the way, this is not a four gate style here this time around from Mexpex. Instead, he's decided to go for three warp gates here into a third base. So little bit of a deviation. Obviously, you can still put on pressure with the with the triple gate blink as well. Uh, but it does mean that the economy is going to be a little bit better overall. So I don't think this is going to be a, a committed all-in or anything like that here for Max Pax, But he's certainly still going to go across the map and test the waters. Now, Nikorak will be finishing up the Stimpak combat shields and plus one infantry weapons here momentarily. That is going to be a very nice power spike for his bio units. It will be. Uh, oh my god, but if Max Pax gets in here... Okay, no, the Marauders are hidden. If he mm -hmm. blinked in and found Stim, that would be so sad for Nikorak. But with extra the extra War Prism micro potential... I know, he's just going to be able to find yeah. a couple of units. We'll be forced out. That was, the numbers are okay. Yeah, two Stalkers for two Marauders. Obviously, that's a little bit better for the Terran, but it's not a disaster for Max Pax by any stretch. Nope. I'm liking this position a little bit better, though, for Nico Rack here so far. He's going to be able to go across the map if he wants to, at least compared to the previous game. It's a little bit nicer for him. Problem is, he still has all of these Stalkers to deal with, right? And Maxpex does have that third Nexus at this point done. He's going into the charge. He's going into the Forge upgrades. Okay, he's going to have to be careful here that not too many of those Stalkers end up going down. But so far, so good right here for the Protals. Yeah, these are, these are solid trades for Max Pax, and every stim that he forces out is so expensive for Nikorak. Those Marauders, yep. they're doing 20 damage a hit to themselves, and I'm pretty sure basically every fight, Nikorak stimmed, you know, four, five, or six Marauders. The first two Metabacks just now start up, but Max Pax is going to be able to bully a little bit longer before those Metabacks are actually out. And behind all this, he's not only done the third Nexus, he's already 
building his production to get out to uh, that eight gate count. So on his, mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. He just started the, the eighth gate behind this and charge is nearly done. Here's the four stalkers into prism in the main base. This is something that we see very frequently these days. Three SCVs, four SCVs now at the front two in total. Oh I mean, God. all of these trades are so incredibly efficient for Protoss. This is just the first wave, right? That's the problem here for Nico Rekt. It's not like he's gonna lose the game to these stalkers here because of the stalkers. It's just that on the back of his max packs is building up a huge economy. He's going into upgrades. He's adding on the Robo Bay. He's gonna go into some immortal production. Like this is just the the first step in a multi-step push. And Nico Rekt really needs to find an out here momentarily because there's no third command center here for the Terran player. He really needs to get something done with this army soon because once Colossi hit the battlefield, okay, we're gonna pull the boys. I think it's not I, a yeah, bad idea. I think all. that's yeah. the yeah best best if chance. If Colossi of, hit the battlefield, it's game over. I I think you're probably right about that. Uh, I think this is his best chance of winning, but we're still gonna see. Oh my <laughs> god, he's so he's gonna difficult do a warp to play in the main against. Too. There's yeah. so much. Stuff. Oh, for sure he is. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, he actually warped in six stalkers at home. All right. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. That surprises me a little bit. Maybe the next one. He wants to He wants to respect his army. It is a uh, it's a pretty decent sized army if he hadn't warped in that extra round of stalkers. And he's already forced the units to stay at home. So why he doesn't even need to warp in more. All the SCVs are already gone. Medivacs, two of them are out of energy. And that plus one weapons is going to be done for Max Vax any moment. He's just going to he's just going to crush this. There's no chance. <laughs> Yeah, looking absolutely dominant here. Not really running into any issues. Normally, I think he'd warp into the main base to kill SCVs, but he figured, you know what? There's SCVs in the main fight. <laughs> May as well warp in uh, over at home instead. And yeah, if you're going to be running them towards me, be my guest. Colossus just popped out of the Robo facility. Ranged is on the back of this too. So that is going to make life a little bit easier for those Colossi. Nico Recto, big stim here. 19 SCVs right now have gone down in total. There's that Colossus. We're backing up to the safety of the shield battery too. Another warp in of, uh, well, whatever really is going to be good here. And you can see that the Metafax are mostly out of energy now as well. Colossus microed back to the safety of the super battery. GG is cold. 